everybody, it's Stuart with Wine on the Dime, and a while back I was at a wine bar here in San Antonio, like one of the two wine bars that we actually have, and I found this glass of wine, and I absolutely loved it. And for a long time I've been looking to see if I could find another one, and I just so happened to stumble upon it. So, let's take a look at the Graham Beck Sparkling Rosé. Hey everybody, before we begin today's video, if you like it, subscribe to the channel, like, share it with your friends, maybe leave a comment, um, do any of the other things that YouTube tells you to do to help promote things that you like. Uh, anyway, so today I'm reviewing the Graham Beck Brut Rosé. It is 12% alcohol by volume, and splurge alert, I paid $16 for it at my local grocery store. Uh, but, but here's the deal. Um, if this is as good as I remember it, then it's already at least a very good. So, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, give me a moment for me to uh, take all this stuff off and uh, then we can take a look at the color. All right, so let's go ahead and pour a sample. Now, this is um, done through what's called Method Cap Classique. And what essentially that means is it's the traditional method that is done in the Champagne region. However, they can't call it Champagne because it's not from there and they decided to give it a different term for traditional method. So there's that. Uh, also, this is 66% Pinot Noir and 34% Chardonnay. So let's take a look at the color of this one. Well, it's frothy. I can't take a look at the color. I'm gonna have to fast forward here a second. In terms of the color, I'm gonna give you a medium pink, no artifacts, no cloudiness. All right, so on the nose, Oh man, I'm getting this nice strawberry. There's a little bit of a cherry. There's a kind of a note of a red apple, a hint of pear, and raspberry. There's just a lot of primary fruit here. There's also a little bit of like a bread note, like almost like a, a baked biscuit, and maybe just a touch. It's a very slight touch of like brown butter. Yeah, but overall, this this is just very red fruit forward with some supporting green fruits and a little bit of that secondary and mallow note kicking into it. It, it. it really smells quite nice. So let's get to the taste. High acid, woo, high acid. But intensity on the nose is medium. Intensity on the palate is intense. It's pronounced. This thing is just kicking you in the face with all of that fruit. That strawberry is like a sour strawberry. The raspberry is like a overly ripe raspberry, just super juicy. That bread is there, but it suppresses itself pretty early on, and it just kind of floats all the way through into the finish. Same with that brown butter note. This is just a really strongly intense fruit forward sparkling wine, and I'm not upset about that at all. So in terms of the other structural components, no noticeable tannins, you're looking at a low alcohol, medium minus, maybe going into medium body wine. And the other thing I like about this is the actual like froth, the what you're getting in terms of the bubbles. It's very fine. It's very fine, well-defined bubbles. They're not overly creamy. They're actually slightly sharp, but that's only because of the amount of acid that's present in this wine. So, it's 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 a non-offensive wine. As a matter of fact, I normally do does this Chambong. I'm not even gonna do it with this one. And I'll tell you why as we get through the Blick. In terms of balance, I think you're in balance. I have no complaints whatsoever, one point. Length, medium finish, half a point. In terms of intensity, pronounced intensity, like super pronounced intensity on the palate. However medium on the nose, I have to give you half a point. And in terms of complexity, I'm getting a bunch of red fruit, I'm getting a little bit of secondary. Uh, I'm getting this nice kind of breadiness that you would get from the traditional method. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you half a point. In the end, that's two and a half points. I'm gonna go ahead and lean towards very good. I know this is a splurge by being about $2 more once you include tax over where the channel's typical price limit is. But I can't tell you how much I enjoy this wine. I enjoy it so much, I don't even want to mass consume any of it. I just want to sip on this wine. 
I want, I want that acid to kick me in the palate. I want all those flavors to play around and just really remind me about why I enjoyed this wine. This wine is, I mean, if you like spicy fried chicken, get yourself some spicy Popeye fried chicken, something like that, and a bottle of this stuff, and oh my God, you will have a religious experience with how well it's paired together. Um, actually, that doesn't sound like a bad idea at all. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you tried the Grand Beck Brut Rosé from South Africa? I'd be interested to know if you have. Leave a comment below, and I'll see you all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime. In the meantime, a bucket of just spicy fried chicken sounds really good. Uh, I'm worried, though, that based upon what I've been eating last year in 2020 that I won't actually survive a bucket of fried chicken and I should probably pull back a little bit. So I'll take a piece out of the bucket. I'll see you guys later.